In this session, we are going to talk about Hayes' law. This is from a scientist from 19th century, German Hayes, mentioned the total enthalpy change of a reaction will be independent of the role taken in case we have the same initial and final condition. So what does that mean, or what is mean by the Hayes' law? Here is an example. It shows a building with starting at ground floor and we want to go to the third floor. We have the following choice. First of all, directly go to third floor from ground floor. Or maybe you can travel to sixth floor first, then fourth floor, and finally come to the third floor. Or maybe you can travel to the fourth floor first, then third floor. Of course, you have plenty of choice, but no matter which choice you are taking, the starting and the final target will be the same. So the energy change will be the same according to the Hayes' law. If we written in the chemical equations like this, reacting to the product, you have choice to go to the intermediate first, then come to the product. Or you can have another choice, go to intermediate one, then intermediate two, and come to the product. Now, you can figure out, you can have more and more intermediate as you like. But according to the Hayes' law, the enthalpy change will be the same because the reactant and the product are unchanged. We use the formation of ethane as an example. Row B is what we have learned so far. This is the enthalpy change of formation of ethane. And we can choose row A first form something called Ekai C2H2 first. Then come to the ethane. Or you can choose form ethene first, then form ethane. From this free row, you can see actually the Enthalpy change will be the same. So what is the importance of Hayes' law? Why we should learn this? This is because sometimes the direct measurement of the enthalpy change is impossible. What kinds of measurement we cannot do it? The first one is the reaction is too exothermic or vigorous, or even worse, the reaction is very slow in process. The third one is sometimes the reaction form a lot of side products or sometimes the reaction will not start automatically. Here is an example in your notes. You want to find the enthalpy change of formation of methane. Now this is impossible for direct measurement because methane cannot form under room condition. We cannot mix carbon and hydrogen and expect that methane will form. So here introduce an algebra method. Step 1, we want to write down the thermochemical equation first. Now here shows. The second one is, we should write down the thermochemical equations from given data. Now, we have given three sets data, and here shows their thermochemical equations. Now we set this aside, and the step 3, we need to align the suitable equation to form the target thermochemical equations. The black one is our target. You can see, on the left hand side, we got a carbon. And from the given data, we only got carbon in the first equation. So we copy down the first equation. Then we need two hydrogen from the three sets of given data. Only equation two have hydrogen on the left hand side. So we double the equation two. We have a CH4 on the product side. And only equation three contain a CH4. But you need to pay attention. In equation 3, the CH4 is on the left hand side, but what we want is on the right hand side. So we need to write the equation 3 in reverse way. That's why we need to add a negative sign next. We try to cross out the duplicated one. For example, we cross out the oxygen gas, then we cross out the CO2, and finally we cross out two water molecules you can check whether the overall equation is what we want. On the right hand side, you can see the overall equation should be equation 1 plus 2 equation 2 plus a minus equation 3. We can input the data or input the value to get the answer is minus 74.7 kJ per mole. Or maybe you can do it by something called enthalpy cycle method. So once again, we copy the thermochemical equation, then we use the given data. First of all, carbon will become CO2. We need an oxygen gas. So you can see I added the oxygen gas besides the arrow. This is okay. Don't worry. 
Then, we get a enthalpy change of combustion of hydrogen. And finally, what we get is the enthalpy change of combustion of methane. So you can see there are three red arrows here. And we try to simplify the pictures. The green arrow is what we want. And the red arrow is the sum of the enthalpy change on the left hand side. So we got one combustion for carbon and two combustion for hydrogen. The other red arrow is the combustion for methane. So you can see we cannot go to the product by using the red arrows because the direction is wrong. So we need to reverse the direction of the second red arrow like this. Then we need to add a negative sign. And the green arrow can be achieved by first travel with red one and then travel with blue one. So this is the answer. The enthalpy change of formation for methane is equal to the combustion of graphite twice the combustion of hydrogen and minus the combustion of methane. Once again, we input the data and we get the exact value. So which one will be better? For me, I will say the algebraic method will be better and faster because if the situation or the question you encounter become more complicated, then the enthalpy cycle will be too large and too complicated for you to handle.